Jonathan, the establishment is really wishing they didn't right now. The board has already disavowed me, and it's me against them. Apparently, they want me to be a follower. I'm not that type of person. I've led soldiers in combat seven times in my 23-year Army career. I don't follow unless it's what's best at the time in terms of outcomes. I taught the EMT program for 19 years. I'm an adjunct professor at CCU. I teach policy and administration under the Healthcare Administration program. So he's qualified to know about these nurses, right? I retired as director of hospital education at Evans Army Community Hospital. Unfortunately, the board and I don't see eye to eye on just about anything. Administratively, we are broken like nothing I've ever seen before. I'm not sure how the district ever operated successfully at all the way it runs now. There is so much animosity and antagonism in our district. I have five areas of focus to concentrate on with several sub areas as the district needs to be looked at from the top to the bottom as everything I've seen can be improved. The budget, we've got to stop thinking cuts and start generating funds. I've explored solar and expressed it to the board. Gotten a full length proposal from Solar Hawks LLC. Why would D60 schools not get solar power? Solar power cuts on electric and it cuts on, my God. And then you could actually make money. That one guy just had a $54,000 solar machine, you know, factor or whatever with his house. So $54,000 installed. So then he's able to sell that electricity to the electric company. So this is a good idea. This is so genius. This is so smart that, you know, instead of like just raising taxes, he's trying to figure out ways to raise funds without having to raise taxes and more money. You know, you can pay your teachers well and then, you know, throw money at it. It doesn't always fix a lot of things, but sometimes when you throw, you know, enough money. <laughs> so I've turned in 11 pages of proposals and the board hasn't allowed it to go public. So I'm working on one issue at a time. I propose selling our buildings that we aren't using to use our stadium to generate funds. So I guess they use the stadium to generate funds to rent it out, maybe to rent it out. There's another way with the stadium, you could just get a corporate sponsor too. So, you know, get the Walmart Wildcats or however you want it. But that's the way you get that corporate sponsor. They pay, you know, a million dollars and they get all that free advertisement. Everybody be using their name to go to the, you know, the core stadium or what have you. So I don't think, I don't know exactly what he means by using the stadium to generate funds. But if he's talking about renting it out, of course you should rent your stadiums out. I don't know why they haven't been thinking about it. How many empty buildings do they have? They got just a bunch of empty buildings just sitting there. Meanwhile, people are homeless living out on the damn, you know, the damn streets. So, and then investigate the merits of school consolidation and then consider a four-day work week. So, I like actually all those issues. Four-day work week, you know, it shouldn't be nine to five. I don't really like the, it's a, the industrial thing. So, the bells and the whistles. So, when you get into the factories, you'll be, you know, used to the listening to the bells and being obedient. But the factories are gone now. So, we have to, it's a brave new world, and so therefore we need to, you know, go a different direction. So we need to figure this stuff out. Four day work week, I just feel like it's, you know, instead of it being like every day, four days, it seems like school would, that actually might make school fun. The merits of school consolidation, is he talking about with D70? Because that would be a good idea, I think, too. Um, I don't know, maybe it's best to keep them two separate because that's, could increase democracy by keeping them separate but he's got ideas right he says he's gonna end up writing another book on this so he's wrote wrote a book he's an advocate of the mentorship and i've personally seen the dividends that they pay first and foremost uh we have to get the right folks in our schools get standard hiring practices in place and open up the board to the public to work together to solve issues with the community i'm not sure what the board is afraid of we have to engage the problem uh, engaged to problem solving. That's not happening right now. So this is pathetic. This is horrible. Kenneth O'Neill is the one who said all that. Kenneth O'Neill is a school board member right now. He was appointed to be school board member. So I forget, I don't know who the older person was or what happened to him, but there was a vacancy. And then they had this really competitive thing where they had, you know, five or six people that applied, I think, including Dennis Mays and uh, Kenny O'Neill. And Kenny O'Neill is the one that had got it. So Kenny O'Neill he was chosen by the current school board. The current school board looked at Kenny O'Neill and they looked at the other candidates and they said out of all those candidates, Kenny O'Neill was the best. He was the most promising, most you know, so he was the best one. So because the school board has already endorsed Kenny O'Neill, that means we know he's smart, he's capable, he's professional, he could do the job. It's not even, you know, a question. He could definitely do the job. 
So uh, he's essentially an anti-establishment establishment figure. Everything, every single criticism that Kenny O'Neill says is 100%. 100%. He's part of the machine, but because the machine chose him and now he's running an election, now he's got to get the people on his side. So he's going to have to be somewhat critical and, you know, I think they'll get over with their feelings getting hurt. But everything that he has said so far when it comes to those not nurses giving out drugs, when it's coming to getting into solar power, when it comes to trying to use the stadium to generate funds to sell on the abandoned buildings, to investigate the merits of school consolidation considered a four-day work week. So he's already got a full-length proposal from Solar Hawks LLC. So he's already got a full-length proposal in order to get some solar power. So this would, you know, why don't we get some, I've been pushing for solar trees. We're trying to get 100% renewable energy. He's on the right path. And I don't know, he said he turned in 11 different proposals and they're not listening. 11 pages of proposals and the board isn't allowed and allowing it to go public. Why? What the fuck is that? I mean, I'm sorry, but like, what what the hell is that? <laughs> what the hell is that about? Why is that happening? That doesn't. That's God. That's ridiculous. Uh, so essentially, you got the smart, thoughtful, educated person, and he's got a lot of good ideas. But because the dictator only wants her ideas, you know, and I, what's her educational philosophy? Does anybody can anybody tell me that Macaluso's educational ph philosophy? What's her theory of education? Does she believe in democracy? Probably not, because she don't even believe in democracy when it comes to six people. Charlotte Macaluso can't get along with six people. One of those people is acting independent. Kenny O'Neill, you're acting independent. Okay, well, I like that. I like that he's independent. I don't want no kiss ass in the school board. So if the, any of these other candidates, Kenny O'Neill's going to get my vote. He's going to get my vote because of everything that he just said here. He's an advocate of the mentorship program. So, you know, I it's like a big brother thing. I think that's okay, like the big brother program. But then the mentorship, I think it would be better if we had a Switzerland model where we had the mentorship for businesses. So you want to become a lawyer? Well, here's a lawyer who needs some help. So we connect the businesses with the students right they got to get a job as soon as they get out and that's what Switzerland is doing they're looking in the businesses and seeing how many jobs that they're going to need and then they're uh, you know filling those positions up so they're essentially creating this mentorship this internship kind of it's more of an internship I guess uh, but uh, they're both pretty much the same so he's got a lot of ideas, a lot of good ideas. The solar power idea is a good one. Using the stadium to generate funds is a really good idea. Selling the abandoned buildings, I don't even know. I mean, just paying for an abandoned building, that means they got to pay for the upkeep and the, uh, you know, whatever else is going on, the taxes and stuff. So it's just sitting there. So, you know, why don't we do something with those buildings? Uh, if anything, hell, you could have open one of those buildings, keep all the uh, the teachers and oppressors out, and then just allow, you know, have one school that believes in democracy. Can we have, there's like 20 schools in Pueblo City. Can we have one of them that believes in democracy, and then, I'll, you know, I'll live over there, and then that'll be the d democratic school I could send my kids to? Please, democracy, anybody is, can anybody hear me? <laughs> can anybody hear me? Hey, I want some democracy. <laughs> Oh, that was that was fun. So the reason why I had got that response from Kenneth O'Neill is because I had sent a question out to all the school board candidates. I said to the five D60 school board candidates of 2017, yes or no? This is one of these hard yes or no questions, right? Should Pueblo City Schools have democracy in the classrooms? And if so, what policy changes or motions or other legislative actions since, of course, city council or the school board is a legislature, the legislative branch, right? Three branches of government, co-equal branches. I mean, sure, Macaluso knows that. It's a co-equal branch, Macaluso. They all don't need to bow down to you. It's okay if they have independent. In fact, I want five independent board members. I want five individual independent board members who have their own ideas about things and they got to work it out. And I want to see you all get along. Get all five on board. And if it's not unanimous, then there's a problem. There's a problem. Figure out the problem. This needs to be five people. Come on. Come on. Let's get five people to get along. Five adults. No wonder there's no democracy. There's not even democracy in the school board. You respect people who have different opinions. You tolerate their opinions and you respect it. You know, you don't have to, uh, you can agree to disagree. You could disagree without being disagreeable. So it's a and it's a constructive criticism, very smart, educated, constructive criticism about the not nurses, about the not nurses. I don't want not nurses giving drugs to my kids either. So the uh, Macaluso, you're wrong. You make sure you got these nurses are registered before they're passing drugs out. 
And how many drugs are you passing out? My God, you're passing drugs out to the kids when they're real young and then you're wondering why there's a big heroin epidemic out here. And are you passing drugs to the kids who have heroin junkies for parents? Doesn't seem like uh, you're teaching them the right lessons whatsoever. You're sedating them because you're oppressing them and then that's the way you're solving that situation and that's not helping anybody. So, uh, if you believe in democracy, how will you enforce democracy with your power? If not, do you believe in giving public school vouchers to the parents so that way I can send my kid to a school of my choice, you know, a cheaper pro-democracy school? Sudbury Valley is only $7,000. $7,500 is what the state pays per student to send your kid to school. So it's cheaper to get a democratic, a true blue education, not this crap education that's not even a real education. So that's essentially my question. Can American government schools here in D60, Pueblo City, have, be in favor of freedom and democracy? Can they be in favor of freedom and democracy? And if you're not going to give me an American government school that teaches us how American government works, if you're not going to give me an American government school that values the, prince, the American principle of democracy, then I want to send my kid to a school that does value freedom and democracy. You don't value freedom and democracy? Okay, that's fine. That's how you want to run your life. That's, you know, run your life how you want to run it. But uh, I want freedom and democracy. It's how I'm going to teach my kids to get along with each other, to respect other people's opinion, to tolerate people's opinion, to stand up, to speak for yourself, to give the reasons for the uh, why you uh, you know are standing up for the issue that you're standing up for, and to make collective decisions for us all to get together and make collective decisions. The teachers don't want that divide and conquer, rule by one, autocracy, monarchy. So you want to wonder why we can't get along with one another? We never were taught. We weren't taught in public school to get along with one another. We were taught to obey the authority figures and not to respect each other. And I flip that on its head. So let's get the, you know, instead of the dictator saying I'm the boss, why couldn't they just say, okay, we're going to be a democracy. And the teacher is there to, you know, if it gets out of, cra you know, gets crazy, but like an organized chaos. They have a kind of organized chaos. So they're independent, working on their different things, but then you're kind of there, you know, to make sure that it doesn't uh, go out of control. But guess what? We're all, as Americans, and we have freedom, and humans have, there's a lot to us, right? We have a lot of, uh, we're very soulful and spiritual, so there's a lot to us. So I just, you know, so what? We're going to be more energetic. We're going to be talking more. We're going to have better relationships, better uh, interactions with one another and again you know when it comes to democracy in the classrooms when it comes to kindergartners yeah teach them read and write you know do do as I say but when it gets to be when they're getting to 18 and they still they mean it's like they can barely tie their shoes and then you're pushing them out the door how come they're barely tying their shoes you know when they're 18 you're making them raise their hand just to go to the bathroom when I talked to Dennis Mays every thing that I said he was against he was like well let me be the devil's advocate you are the devil's advocate, Dennis Mays. Now, I want you to be the student advocate, though. Can you be the student advocate? He was all about throwing Huckleberry Finn in jail. So if Dennis Mays was the uh, teacher back in Huckleberry Finn's day, then uh, Jim would still be a slave. And Huckleberry Finn was the only righteous, good person in that society. He felt bad because he actually recognized Jim as a human being. And he felt bad because he didn't tell the authorities that he had ran away. But ultimately, Huck Finn was the good person, the only good person in that entire book. I mean, Jim was wholesome and good, so just Jim and Huck, though. So he's all about, you know, the truancy thing, throwing people in the truancy thing. Uh, he doesn't have any idea about Maslow's hierarchy and the teaching, the learning pyramid. He doesn't have any theory of education. So essentially, it's just like, trust me, but if he's an authoritarian then I, I don't know. I don't like that. Authoritarian by itself isn't bad, but if you're authoritarian because you're a student advocate, that's awesome. If you're an authoritarian because, you know, and you're not a student advocate, freedom and democracy. Empower these students to be all that they can be. So Taylor Voss had uh, mentioned, just sent me a quick little email. So wait a second. When you say democracy in the classrooms, what do you mean? 
Uh, I mean, I live in America, and I'm an American, and you're running for election, and that's democracy, and how come we don't have that in the school system? But, uh, okay, I'll give him, uh, you know, some clarification, so I'll let you know, you know, where I'm headed with this. I said that my definition of democracy is ruled by the people, so essentially empowering the students to be all that they can be. So, I remember public school, I remember that there wasn't democracy, so I said it's really about the spirit of democracy, to have the overall vision, the, you know, philosophical vision. Sudbury Model Valley Schools is the ideal, perfect dream model for a democratic school. So, if we could make Pueblo City into Sudbury Valley, I would like that very much. Or at least one of the schools, so that way we could actually have freedom and democracy, you know, kind of school. And uh, their, I think it's a Sudbury, it could be Summer Hill, but their quote was, they would rather have happy street sweepers instead of a neurotic prime minister. So as long as you're happy, and that's, you know, they ask you the fundamental questions of life. They don't make you neurotic and crazy, and then, you know, you get crazy ambitious, and then you're some neurotic prime minister. You know, it had to be Summer Hill, because that's a British thing. But um, democracy could be direct or indirect. You could vote for the people, right? You could uh, give them more choices over the curriculum. You could work on decentralized classrooms, have classroom meetings, which is uh, William Glasser in terms of working on discipline issues. You have classroom, you know, instead of getting the boss or the principal and, you know, telling on little Jimmy for always yelling out, we all get together and we say, little Jimmy, what's going on? You know, what's happening? And then we'll talk to the class, class, what can we do in order to help Jimmy, you know, realize his uh, full potential. So instead of like just smashing the, you know, smashing them with uh, force, instead we're conversating, we're talking about this. And it's kind of like, you know, they can't get their work done if you're doing that. But what is really going on with you, little Jimmy? Is there something, you know, do you want to talk about it? And if there's like, yeah, I feel lonely and nobody's talking to me. Okay, well then, you know, the other students, you need, you know, don't treat him with disrespect. Why, why don't you like him? Well, he stinks. Well, little Jimmy, maybe you need to, you know, get a shower. Maybe you want to get cleaned up a little but, uh, you know, but basically get to the bottom of it. That's essentially what I'm saying. Uh, get students involved in the decision-making process. In Owen County, there was a student that was on the su uh, student, uh, the school board. So they had like five adults, and then they had one non-voting student. But I thought that was absolutely, you know, incredible. It was revolutionary and progressive because they're actually getting a student's voice on the board. So it's like, okay, you speak for all the students. What do you say? How do you interpret what we're about to do? So I think that's good to get at least one, but hell, why not get a couple of them? I mean, why they make the students do the pledge. I mean, they could have the students do, you know, actual like governance. They could actually have them anyways. So uh, get the students involved in decision making process, get the student home uh, some responsibility, make them strong mentally, physically, spiritually. So they're ready to take on the world when they're 18. Uh, democratic principles, I'd like to see minority get their say, majority get their way, work on speaking up on what they believe, back it up with reasons, tolerating other people's opinions and making collective decisions. So this is what I responded. You wanted to know what I thought about, you know, democracy in the classrooms. There's uh, probably that's a better, more articulate platform than what, you know, Taylor never responded. He never responded to that. So I gave him basically he was trying to feel me out. So what do you mean by democracy in the classroom precisely? Huh? You say the students should run everything and nobody else gets power? Nobody else, huh? Yeah, I guess in a way, but, uh, you know, I know there needs to be some guides by the side and there needs to be, you know, but essentially, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. So God of teaches us that if you just have a computer and a bunch of students, learning will take place. That's the teachers that stop learning from happening. So God of so check him out. So got a Mitra, he had the hole in the wall experiment. And the hole in the wall experiment said that the teachers get in the way of education, right? Hey, you're going to learn my calculus because I told you. But, uh, you know, my uh, parents are homeless junkies and I'm living on the damn street. I don't care. You learn calculus because I'm the boss and I get paid 50000 and I get all the power. And I was taught you need to be 100% compliant. You're being disruptive to the other student. Your homelessness is really very burdensome to me. Yeah, well, it's burdensome to me, too, in the fact that you're piling on more homework. How am I supposed to do this calculus homework, right? Well, I don't even have a damn desk. Where the hell am I supposed to? I don't even have God. Little Jimmy, you stink because you're homeless. So, uh, class, what can we do in order to help Jimmy find a home? Oh, I know this person. I know that thing. There's the empty buildings, you know, contour crafting. Okay, now what can we do? How We don't have the money. We're going to get the financing. Now we're talking. 
Now we're actually talking. Now we give a shit about the, the kid. We actually give a shit about where they came from and what they're going through. That's a democracy. That's a democracy. Instead of, you know, instead of just branding little Jimmy for, you know, speaking out of turn as a troublemaker. He spoke out of turn. Lots of people spoke out of turn. Wasn't that, uh, that Joe Smith or whatever with Obama? You lie. You lie, Joe Wilson. You lie. He spoke out of turn, and he's, like, super famous for it. You know, he got condemned or whatever, but uh, guess what? The people love that. They love that he spoke out of turn. And a closed mouth don't get fed. So if you're not speaking up, then you're your own best ally. If you can't speak up for yourself, there was one thing that uh, Joyce Bales actually did mention. And she said that a lot of the students can't even articulate their own vision, their own, you know, ideas. They can't even articulate it. So it's like, what do you think about it? Well, uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty pitiful. So... They should definitely be able to articulate their own viewpoints, but that's the thing. You can get, you can get by school without ever articulating your viewpoint whatsoever. Shut up, sit down, do your homework, never say a word. Maybe you know, say something just to make it look like you're participating, but regurgitate the right back to the teacher. That's it. You'll pass, right? You'll pass, but it's uh, not real and it's oppressive, and you're getting used to being obedient to authority and not giving a damn about your peers. So I, I hate the entire, you know, the, the entire setup of how public school education is. Margaret Wright, she responds. She said she'll respond shortly. Just yes or no question, you know. And then uh, Dennis Mays didn't respond. He did talk to me, so I'm not. But this is a simple question. Yes or no? Yes or no? What do you think? And then Dottie Calhoun, of course, she's against Montessori education um, for her own children. So... The, why does why is freedom, you know, she thinks freedom is burdensome to her childhood, the freedom, she should have been protecting her, the freedom, you know, the dignity of her child since they've been born, and uh, Montessori school is follow the child, so that's uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, Jean-Jacques Rousseau specifically is talking to the mothers, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, a meal on education, he says, mothers, look what they're doing to your kids, look how they're messing your kids up when they go into the school system, mothers, Kids are good. They start out being good. Keep that essential good quality of them. Mothers, listen. Listen. You want your kid to be strong. You want them to be strong mind, body, and uh, character, and spiritually. So you want them to have, you know, you want them to be a good all-star when they get out there. To be strong, independent, to be capable, to be competent, to be able to take, you know, the world, to grab the world by its tail, to, uh, you know, you, the world is uh, the young's oyster. So, so there's no democracy when it comes to the top, and then the way that the culture is when the top does something, and then it permeates all throughout the entire building. So since there's no democracy in the school board, there's no democracy in the entire school, and that's horrible because the way these are the adults squabbling, just like a teacher training school. If we would have taught each other, very simple, easy concept. We're all teaching, so let's teach each other. We're all going to be teachers, so you'd be practicing your craft, you're learning relationships, you're learning to listen to each other, you're learning stuff from each other. If sit and get is the way that we're supposed to learn, then how come would-be teachers can't sit and get from each other? The would-be teachers in teacher training school are still being dictated down to like they're a bunch of dumb kindergartners. Do this, do that. Even when they teach your training school, they still have to raise their hand to go to the bathroom. <laughs> it's actually not that bad, but it's if you try to sneak off, it's kind of like, where is, where is he going? I'm not going to pee in my pants and I'm not going to ask you <laughs> if I'm allowed to uh, go to the bathroom to prevent myself from peeing in my pants. So Kenny O'Neill was the only one that had actually responded. He didn't say what he thought about democracy. He just says that few different folks feel that democracy is displayed differently. So essentially, he, I think he's kind of... Um, somewhat saying implicitly saying that demo there's no democracy in the school system but he wants to hear my perspective for first so he was feeling me out too but you know again i told basically i give more of an analysis of freedom and democracy and respect and the dignity to taylor voss and then he didn't respond whatsoever so he was like so what do you mean by democracy all empowering the students oh well, i don't want that so i'll just assume that everything that i wrote there was basically you know taylor voss is against it he read what i wrote 
and I was like towards empowerment, towards students getting to own their own education. So I'll just assume the opposite. He doesn't want student empowerment. He doesn't want the students to own their education. He doesn't believe in any kind of democracy. He doesn't believe in the spirit of democracy. He doesn't want to have classroom meetings. He doesn't want to get to the heart of the issue. He doesn't want the students to choose their own curriculum. He doesn't want decentralized classrooms. He very much wants tyrannical classrooms. Uh, Taylor Voss, get the students involved in the decision-making process. He doesn't want that. Get students responsibility. He doesn't want that. Make them strong mentally, physically, spiritually. He doesn't want any of that. Make sure they're ready to take on the world when they're 18. You know, I want the kids to fly out of the nest. And the only way they're going to fly out the nest is if their wings are strong in order to fly out. But if you never allowed them to use their wings, if you never allowed them to fly, then those little flappy wings are just as going, going to be just as fragile as when they were first born. So that's why I think it's just a continuum, right? You gradually, you give them a little bit of responsibility when they're young and just more and more and more. And then when they're 18, they should be ready to go. They should be independent, competent, smart, ready to go. Ready to go. What job are you going to get? Where are you headed to? What is your, you know, life's goals? But I remember school, I was valedictorian in my school. I was valedictorian in my school and I wasn't ready. Because they never, at any point, they didn't want me to stand up. They didn't want me to speak up. I was the most obedient person in the entire class, in the entire school. When the senior skip day happened, I was the only person that was left in the school. And uh, so that's, uh, you know, it is what it is. But I don't think that being valedictorian, while, you know, I uh, went after it and I was able to uh, win that, you know, prestigious sort of award. I don't actually, in terms of my development as a human, as a person, as a friend and socializing, I didn't make any connections, no relationships. I was the most obedient. I was the most obedient. And that's, that's, you're not going to succeed in this world by being the most obedient. So that's horrible. Essentially, teachers are screwing over the kids that are listening to them. Oh, you're listening to me? Now shut your mouth and don't ever... Okay, so should I listen to the junkies too? Oh, well, these junkies are telling me to give them all their money. So here's all my money, junkie. No, I'm just supposed to be obedient. Anybody who gives me orders, here's, here's a bunch of money, junkies. Now go ahead. Oh, you want some taxes? Here you go, government. Who gives a crap, right? Just be obedient. Okay, judge, you want to throw me in jail? Five years? All right, judge, I'll just be obedient. No, no, that's that's horrible. That's I think it actually kills the humanity as soon as you make someone a tool. As soon as you crush their humanity, you've already destroyed them. So, who didn't say anything, right? Uh, Dennis Mays didn't respond, and then Dottie, Dottie Calhoun didn't respond at all. So, I just absolutely know where they stand. So, I'm definitely voting for Kenny O'Neill. He says, yes, the voucher process is a sound one that he supports. Thanks for emailing me. So, Kenny O'Neill, he doesn't talk about getting democracy in the schools. I do like that he's got a platform and that he's got different ideas. So I like that. I like that he's experienced. I like that he's a leader. I like that he's, I like a lot of things about Kenny O'Neill. I like that he's criticizing, you know, the not nurses. And I like how he's basically, he's got all, the, you know, get some solar power, use the stadium to generate funds. He wants to have a standard hiring practices. Why don't we have standard hiring practices? Because they want to hire their fuck, their friends we should have standard, there should be a rubric. Every teacher has a rubric, right, to make sure that all the students' papers are graded, you know, just perfectly according, you know, there's no bias. So essentially, here's the rubric. These are the points they have to hit. So that way you could judge and grade each uh, paper, you know, exactly the same. So it's consistent across the board. Now, you know, to be consistent across the board. and uh, But they don't even do that when it comes to... The adults, right? So, get standard hiring practice in place. They're not even using a rubric for when it comes to the teachers. Open up the board to the public to work together to solve communities. He's not sure what the board is afraid of. I don't know what the board is afraid of either. And so, uh, they should stick their neck out. He sees what's going on. He's, all, you know, he's the establishment. He's on the inside and he sees that the establishment is corrupt and he's telling us about it. So, I trust that too. I trust that too. So I'm definitely 100% voting for Kenny O'Neill and I'll probably end up voting for Margaret Wright, but only because she said that she wanted to empower the students. Taylor Voss couldn't say he wanted to empower the students. He is so afraid of getting democracy in the classroom. He can't even say he wants to empower the students. Margaret Wright did. And uh, she said that. And then she also has the, you know, the organizational structure thing. So it seems like there's some substance there. But uh, for right now, definitely Kenny O'Neill, and uh, maybe I'll just vote for Kenny O'Neill twice and just not vote for anybody else. So, yeah, you all should think about voting for Kenny O'Neill.